Okay guys, we got an instructional video here uh, trying to teach you how to walk your way and use the TENS unit. This specifically is the TENS 210T unit. Uh, they're all fairly similar. I'm going to get through this guy here. So we'll open this one up. Battery goes in here. Got the 9 volt. Next, we get ourselves some electrodes. Oh, these ones are new here. Place these on here. For each channel with a tens, we have a red and a black, a positive and a negative. We're gonna need each one for one channel. Different units function the, the positive and negative differently, but for the tens, they work together as one unit. So we're gonna put that on, put that over here to our lead one. Make sure that's securely in. Then we'll do the other side here. Put this one in here. One word. Going to apply any kind of electrotherapy, we usually want to still think of our standard IADET concept and we're introducing ourselves, all that same thing. Don't need to go over that again, you know what we're doing there. Uh, we want to start out explaining the intent or the goal, what to expect with the electrotherapy. Um, so for example, we're going to use this to try and reduce pain, pain management, inflammation control, whatever the intent is. We want to check for contraindications, precautions for why we wouldn't do this on the patient. I'm not going to list the inclusive, all inclusive list. It's, it's on your notes. But what I suggest is getting down a nice spiel to where you don't miss any of them. For example, I go, uh, any histories of seizure or epilepsy, any active cancer that you're aware of, any pacemaker, any aversions to electrical therapy. So I like to have a nice order so I know I'm not missing any. Next, pre-test. We want to test resting level of pain and also the location. We can either do pain, if pain's the intent, if the intent is increased range of motion, then we want to get a baseline range of motion measurement. Maybe it's a functional um, activity assessment, the FAA. So whatever the idea, the goal is, that's where we're going to get our baseline test. So we can then post treatment determine if it was effective or not. Next, we want to position the patient in the position that they're going to want to be on, thinking of where the location of the electrodes are going to go. If it's going to go on their lumbar spine, are they going to be in prone? Are they going to be in supine? It's going to be on their elbow. Can they do it in sitting? So on and so forth. And then draping as may be necessary. If we need to expose uh, an intimate body part, do we need to drape that as well? Sensory testing. Sharp dull. This most likely would have been done in your examination part of the scheme before we get out getting into an intervention. However, if you did not get to that, we do want to make sure that the area that you're applying the electrodes test for any uh, change in sensation. If their um, sensation is decreased, that's going to affect how much intensity they're going to tolerate and so forth. So keep that in mind. doesn't mean you're going to not do the application of the intervention. It just means you're going to be thinking a little bit more thoroughly about uh, intensity level. Electrode placement. That is going to be up to you as the clinician. And you're going to be thinking about, again, the goal or intent the structure that you're trying to target. With TENS, it's really nice. You can either put the electrodes directly on the painful spot, or you can kind of go around it and surround it. Uh, what you're gonna find works best is everyone responds to it differently. Do with what you think is going to work the best, pre and post test their um, symptoms, and see which one works best. It might take a couple sessions to figure out what placement is best for this patient. And then the placement may actually be kind of fluid and moving. Each session, it might be slightly different, so you might have to move it an inch or two uh, each time. So just know that you're never gonna really be married to an exact placement. There's no standard protocol for elbow. This is exactly where you put it. You will see things in literature that this might be an ideal placement, but again, every patient's different. So uh, kind of go with that in the moment. <clears throat> and lastly, we're gonna prep the skin. Uh, the electrodes, you want to think of any kind of anything that's going to slow the impedance through. So 
oils, lotions, um, anything like that on the skin will affect the ability of this to conduct the electricity. So uh, we wanna make sure and prep the skin properly. Just some mild soap and water does perfectly fine. Wipe it down, dry it. If you don't have that, or if you wanna do a little quicker, you could also use an alcohol wipe. You can use one of these, just wipe and swipe, or tear and swipe. Or in uh, the clinic, I usually just have isopropyl alcohol bottles um, and we squirt it onto a towel and wipe it down because this sometimes just isn't enough alcohol on these to get it done. If you do use alcohol, bear in mind that that does dry the skin out more than just soap and water. Um, so sometimes that will uh, create a little dryness and the, the pads might get a little pinchy with that. If that's the case, you may need a little bit of aloe vera over the dry skin. Um, and we'll go over that a little bit more in detail. So <clears throat> you, if someone is very, very hairy, and we're noticing they're not able to get good contact. We do not wanna shave them because that would, as you imagine, cause little micro abrasions in the skin and not make it very comfortable. So what we're going to do is trim the scissor, trim it with scissors, clip it down, that'll make it a little more comfortable. Uh, and never wanna put placements over any abrasions or open skin, not gonna be a good idea. Uh, if we have trouble getting the pads to stick, sometimes I'll use some um, athletic wrap tape around it or even just a velcro wrap around to hold it all right so getting to actual placement so let's just use my thumb here for an example so it's nice and easy in the camera what we'll do here i'm going to get this placement when we pull these pads off of here do not pull from this wire it will compromise this here pull it from the side so that way it comes off nicely so you do not compromise here it is the strongest right here in the middle. Remember that when we're placing this on the patient. When we're looking at pads, there is a glue on here. If you see a big hole in the glue to where the, the black rubber underneath is exposed, that pad is no longer good. Toss it and get a new one because it can then uh, irritate the skin or even leave a small burn on the skin. So here we go, we'll place this guy here. I did not prep my skin just for sake of demonstration purposes. Uh, you get the idea. So not like that. Okay, get on the side. Okay, and let's just go here and here for now. This placement. What's nice with tens, you can use one or two channels. You don't have to use them both, but you can. Tens also works exclusive. Each channel works exclusive of each other. So if I wanted to use my left hand and my right hand, I could, as opposed to IFC, the four channels need to work together. Now we're getting in here with this guy. We got pulse width, pulse rate, mode, and timer. Timer is pretty straightforward. It's the time. It's either gonna be on continuous, 60 minutes, or 30 minutes. Continuous, it'll just go until the battery runs dead or until you shut it off. Up here in mode, we got B, C, and M. Burst, continuous, and modulated. And they're exactly as they sound, either a continuous signal, a modulated signal where it's kind of randomized, and a burst signal where it comes in small burst waves like this. Uh, all of this is in the instructions and in the literature. You can read more about it in the, the notes. Uh, pulse width here. Uh, there are parameters. Again, look up in your notes and you can see what, kind of what different parameters are used for what kinds of things, whether it's a spasm or pain or what have you. But just in general, if you increase the pulse width, the higher the number, the stronger the stimulation is going to be. Um, typically, the wider the pulse width, the more motor recruitment we're going to get and the more narrow the more of a sensory recruitment we're going to get in general when we're talking about pulse rate uh, faster typically greater than 80 is going to be uh, feel like a continuous sensation and the slower it is is going to be more of a bursting sensation and more of a point specific so the more pulse rate the better it is for especially for pain control it feels more comfortable on the patient feels more like a gentle buzz versus kind of bursts of needles okay and then we're going to go here typically we're using tens strictly for pain maybe a little bit of swelling but we're definitely not typically using it for a motor training uh, but it can in fact be used for that if we're on limited resources uh, we could work on this for maybe spasm or contractions. And we're gonna look at setting these guys to do that. Okay, so I'm just gonna set it at 280 for the pulse rate for now. And I'm just gonna go on continuous and continuous just to get this going, so we'll stop that. Up here are our intensities. <clears throat> this one is for this channel, this one for this channel clearly, starting out in the off mode. So right now I am on this channel here. This one. 
So I'm going to turn this guy on. You get a green light telling you it's on. Turn this up until I feel a sensation. So already you can see I'm slightly getting a motor response out of it. And you can see there I'm getting a contraction. So is that my desired response? A contraction, maybe if I'm trying to work on a spasm, something like that. If I'm trying to work on pain, this probably wouldn't be the best because it's a little uncomfortable for me. So I would go in and adjust my pulse rate or my pulse width or both to get this to be more comfortable for what my intent is going to be. So I would turn this off, back this up a little bit so it's less of a motor. Turn this back on. And that's a lot more comfortable for me and I'm not getting as big of a contraction out of my muscles. And then I could rest with this for 15 to 30 minutes would be an ideal treatment time. And I go with comfort. You could couple this with cryotherapy or a moist heat would be fine. And there we go. So pretty straightforward there on how to use this. My suggestion is play around with it on yourself so you can tell what different settings feel like. You'll be better explaining it to your patient and you'll be better uh, results for you. When you're removing these guys, same concept as taking it off the plastic. Do not grab from here and pull. You're just going to trash these things and end up just risking more damage. So I usually go for a spot that's not great already. It's already loose there. And I'll just slowly peel that off. Okay. Apply this back to here like so. Pretty straightforward on that. Okay. These pads are good for about 30 uses. If you're prepping the skin well, if you're using a lot of lotion and things on the people, it's not going to last as long. About 30 uses, okay? We like to make sure we remove these each time. Holding here, pulling here, okay? You'll see people, they'll just kind of grab and yank. Not great, because again, you're going to compromise these connectors. So nice and controlled there, pull that out. 